Nothing says Thanksgiving like murdering a pomegranate. I have two hours before I have to go and pick up Penelope from school. I'll try and get her in the afternoon shots. But the plan today for this two hour challenge is to clear path through the rosemary and lavender that has been unmaintained for the last couple of months and then to harvest as many of the pomegranates right here on this tree that I can and I'll take you along with that see if I can get that done in the two hours before I have to go pick her up from school all right come along with me <music> So I was just about to go to time-lapse mode and speed this up, but I had to stop and let you guys see something. We have some honeybees on this, I don't know what it is, it's a weed but it's flowering, and um, they have gigantic pollen pants on, so I wanted to show you this. So fun to see, those are actually small pollen pants compared to what I saw when I was first over here, but they're gathering pollen from the flowers and they mix it with their saliva and then they pack it onto their back legs to take it back to the hive. I love it. And when you see a bee on a plant with pollen on its legs, they only gather pollen or nectar from one plant per trip. So you know that that pollen color is from that plant. For example, lavender has a yellow pollen. She would think it might be purple, but it's not. I'll see if I can capture that a little later. Hello, pollinators. You are very welcome here. Keep up your good work. Got to get back to mine. <laughs> the size of these guys that are on the east side of the tree that get the morning sun. They're gigantic. So that's my two hours. I've left some low on the tree for Penelope to be able to harvest when she gets home. But all in all, pretty good haul. Yesterday, and it is raining today and in this arid climate we don't know what to do with that. <laughs> I thought I was prepared. I had brought in my dahlia divisions um, to keep them dry and that was a good choice. But then there were a bunch of areas where I have succulents that flooded. <laughs> 
So they are sitting in water right now. There's a break in the rain and I'm gonna go and try to rescue some of the succulents, the beautiful succulents that I just showed you in our last episode. And I'll give you a little bit of an update too on how they're growing and we'll take a little bit of a look and peek at where they're doing well and then where I need to move some or get them under cover. So come on, let's go. This has come a long way from what you guys last saw. I got all the rock in there. Um, I think it looks really great right now and it's in well-draining soil so none of this should be affected by the rain. This should all do really well and in the pots as well. We have a lot more in the succulent gutters and everything that was in there has grown an awful lot as well. It looks so great. I love the look of these. Penelope planted up this hanging basket. I love it. This is one of the areas that definitely needs to be rescued from the rain. I did not put drainage holes in this fountain. And while it looks beautiful, I need to rescue them. I'm gonna put them into this flat that will drain and I can keep it out of the rain until I can get drainage holes in here. I don't want the roots to be affected by the wet and the cold, so I need to put them into soil somewhere else. But look at these things. These have all rooted beautifully. I need to remove a couple of those leaves, but look at that root ball. My goodness. And these were some of the plants from the unboxing from Succulent Source. This was another one. I probably should be putting them into individual pots, but I do love the look of the large sizes in here, but I should take pity on them. <laughs> We've got some roots and look at these little babies. Look at that baby. Some of these have roots, but no baby attached. So I don't know if they're gonna actually grow a plant of their own, but it's fun to watch. Oh, this one has a nice little baby tucked inside. Let's see. Hello, baby. And here's the other side of the succulent porch. We have the rocks all placed down here as well. Beautiful, beautiful plants. A lot of them from succulent source. And then I have this table over here with all of the ones that are still in pots that I sourced from elsewhere. These actually were all taken from a plant that we have in the yard and I just popped them in to some soil and they're rooting up too. Let me show you. A... That's all root. It's all root within there. So that's exciting. And these are all little babies from leaf propagation as well. This is another tray that flooded that I had to switch to a tray with drainage holes. But these all have sweet little babies on them too. looks much better. <laughs> we're processing pomegranates today. What I'm going to do first is we're going to scalp the top to pull the pop the top off. Um, so first I do a cut all the way around, not cutting in too far. You don't want to really break into the arrows. And then once you've gone all the way around, 
should be able to just easily top it off. You might want to do that over your bowl. So I have a bowl of water to go ahead and crack the pomegranate out into. Then looking from the top, you're going to look for two veins that are across from each other as much as you can and cut down those. Then you can stick your knife into the center and twist to kind of pop it open. All right. And then kind of just soften the outside, open up some of these membranes, and then you turn it upside down in your hand. You take a wooden spoon and just start spanking. And then once everything's mostly out of there, you can help the last little ones. You want to keep this membrane and the pith out because they're bitter. And then you have great pomegranate arrows for juicing, and for making wine, or for making jam. Why do we call the pomegranate tree the kissing tree? Because we kiss and there's bells and then we ring the bells, it's time to kiss. Yes, do you know where the bells are from? The bells are from the wedding of my cousin. We had already started calling the tree the kissing tree and it came up as a joke one time because they were actually over and I think we were wondering where they were and they were out in the yard somewhere and I said oh they're just under the kissing tree as a joke and it kind of stuck and then at their wedding there were the wedding bells for the bride and groom to kiss and so there were some extras at the end so we took some home and we strung them to the tree and so when the wind comes or if someone brushes by the tree and makes one ring, then whoever's under the tree kisses. And it's pretty often us, isn't it? Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the kissing tree bell. From Sundust Farm Homestead. Cheers. And, and happy, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thank you for watching, subscribers. Give us a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. Look, you can see my breath. Can you see that? I can see it, but I don't know if you can. Anyways, there's a break in the rain. Like knock knock. Hey, did you hear the knock knock joke the other day? What? She was at school the other day and mm -hmm. one of her friends stood up and said, knock knock. And she said, oh, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> she said, no, you have to say who's there. Then she said, okay, let's start over. <laughs> so then they started over. What was the joke? So say it to me, knock knock. Say knock knock to me. Knock knock. Who's there? Me. Me who?
Little pee. <laughs> <laughs> so try again. Knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo who? <laughs> Sorry to make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> From Sunday's farm. Wait, I was laughing. Have a Thanksgiving! Yahoo!